Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president at M Carbo. Really excited to talk about trigger pull reduction percentage. We do a lot of that around here. Now, before your eyes glaze over, you skip the next video. This is some good information. Let's get on the same page. A lot of the videos will do a before and after trigger pull reading. And that's to give everybody a general idea of what sort of reduction you can expect. And it's a percentage reduction. And that's something we're going to start hammering home more frequently. It's a percentage reduction. So let's just do a quick example. Say you have a starting trigger pull of eight pounds, and then you put in the spring kit, now you have a six pound trigger. Two pound difference, right? So we take two pounds divided by eight pounds, and that gives us 0.25. So we had a two pound reduction, and this was a starting trigger pull. So 0.25 is the result. That's a 25% trigger pull reduction. Now let's do the same thing. Say another guy, John, for example, he has a six pound trigger to start with. Puts in the spring kit, now he's got a four and a half pound trigger pull. And that gives him a one and a half pound trigger pull reduction. So now we'll take that 1.5 divided by the six. So one and a half pound reduction divided by the initial factory trigger pull, 1.5 divided by six equals 0.25, all right? So 25% trigger pull reduction. It's the same trigger pull reduction. Different starting point, different ending point, but the same percentage reduction, and that's the key. So whether you've got a gauge, say you're using a five gallon jug and you're hooking a string up to your rifle, we don't recommend that. It's not very accurate or consistent, but say you're doing that, or say you're using a luggage scale or a fish scale, we don't really recommend that either because they're not calibrated, they're not precise. Say you're using a Wheeler gauge or a Lyman trigger pull gauge, we recommend those. Now, they're designed for trigger pull readings, but they can also be out of calibration. We've got one over there that actually is out of calibration that we discovered, and that's why we keep multiple gauges. We make sure they're calibrated. So I'm gonna point that out, but the key ingredient here is whether you've got one that's calibrated or not, you've got a baseline, a starting point, and an ending point, and you get that difference and you divide by the starting point. So whatever that difference is, two pounds divided by the eight pounds gave us 0.25, 25% trigger pull reduction. Six pounds minus the four and a half pounds, which is what we got, so it gave us a one and a half pound trigger pull reduction. 1.5 divided by the six is 0.25, 25%. Same thing, same percentage, different starting points, different ending points. So that's the key ingredient. That's what we want to focus on, trigger pull reduction percentage. Let's jump on over to the tabletop and do a couple examples. All right, guys, so for this example, you can see from left to right, we've got a Wheeler manual gauge here. We've got a Lyman digital gauge here. This is the one that's out of calibration. We've got a new Lyman digital gauge here. And we've also got a Wheeler digital gauge. Now we're gonna use a Ruger Mini 14 for this example. Just wanna quickly show, you know, chamber's clear, bolt face is clear, magazine well is empty. Let's go ahead and do some trigger pull reading. All right, so we're gonna start off with the Wheeler manual gauge. You can see how the way this works, in case you guys haven't seen this, this little yellow piece here is where it will eventually stop. So you pull, right? And then the trigger goes off, all right? That little yellow marker is your basically your high water line. And you can see on the scale, it goes from eight ounces down here, one pound, two pounds, three pounds, all the way up to eight. And it's tiny little increments there that you can see all those little tick marks. So. It is not quite as precise in terms of getting down to ounces. You've got to somewhat do the conversion in your head, but it gives you a general idea. And like I said, it's a baseline, so that's all we're worried about. So we'll go ahead and we'll write on our board here. Uh, we'll, just do, we'll just do WM for Wheeler Manual Gauge. And we're gonna write all these trigger pull readings here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So we'll reset this gauge at the bottom. Now we'll go ahead and test this trigger pull. All right, so there's the first one. You can see seven pounds, just under seven and a half. So we'll call it, let's just call it seven and a half pounds. 7.5. All right, let's keep going. Reset the gauge. Okay, so six pounds. Six and three quarters. 
is where we're at. We're going to the bottom of the triangle here, six and three quarters. Okay. So then we'll write that down. All right. 6.75. You can kind of see we're already sort of getting an average now. Go ahead and charge it. Do another reading, reset our gauge. Wow. So almost eight pounds. So that was seven pounds, seven and three quarters is where we're at on that. Okay. So you can see right away, no two trigger pulls are ever the same. All right, so that's right at seven and a half pounds. Go ahead and write that down. Let's do one more. Reset our gauge. Just under eight pounds again, seven pounds, seven and three quarter pounds. All right, so you can see right there, First trigger pull on the Wheeler manual gauge was seven and a half pounds. Second was six and three quarter pounds. Third was seven and three quarter pounds. Fourth was seven and a half, seven and three quarter pounds. So you can see we're averaging about seven and a half, seven and three quarter. So what we would do is add that up, divide by five, and that would give us our average trigger pull. All right, let's jump on over to the next gauge. We'll use the Lyman digital gauge. All right, so up next, we've got the Lyman digital gauge. This is the new one. So right here, you can see, in case you're not familiar, this is how you clear it out. So you hit that ready button, you'll notice me doing that here in a second. So we'll just, on our board, we're gonna write um, um, LD1 for Lyman Digital Gauge 1. All right, let's start with some trigger pull readings. All right, clear it out. Five pounds, 15.6 ounces. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So we'll do five pounds, 15 ounces. All right, so I know I don't really wanna get this confusing. So it's five pounds, 15 ounces. So we'll keep track of that as is, but that's nearly six pounds. You can see 16 ounces in a pound. So five pounds, 15 ounces. Let's do some more trigger pull readings. Go ahead and clear it out. Takes a second. Five pounds, 10.7 ounces. So we'll go ahead, five pounds, 10 ounces. Cleared out. Four pounds, 14.2 ounces. Ah, not doing any decimals, just four pounds, 14 ounces. That's way off. Five pounds, 7.4 ounces. Clear it out. Four pounds, 9.6 ounces. Okay, so there's our five pulls. So now we need to go ahead and get an average. So just to keep everything pretty simple, you know, we started with doing it like this where we just did seven and a half pounds. Let's do that. So we'll go ahead and just convert everything real fast. So five pounds, 15 ounces. Let's just call that six pounds. We'll just round up here. So that's six pounds, 6.0, and then five pounds, 10 ounces. Let's call that 5.75. Okay, four pounds, 14 ounces. Let's go ahead and call that 4.75. All right, five pounds, seven ounces, we'll call that 5.5. 5. Four pounds, nine ounces, that's 4.75. So it kind of clears up that murkiness a little bit. Now you can kind of see a general average here. So what we'll do is we'll add it all up and divide by five. All right, so the average comes out to 5.35 is the average. All right, so there's quite a bit of difference here. All right, let's go ahead and test the other Lyman digital gauge, which is out of calibration. All right, so this is the other Lyman gauge. This is the one that we discovered that's out of calibration. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call this one the LD2. LD2. All right, let's go ahead and do some trigger pull readings. You can see this one's pretty similar, but the ready button's over here. It's got a power on. All right, there we go.
8 pounds, 10.5 ounces. Just to save a little time, we'll go ahead and do the converting now. So that's 8.75. Seven pounds, nine ounces. We'll call that seven and three quarters. 7.75. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. We're gonna go ahead and call that nine pounds. 9.0. Eight pounds, 2.5 ounces. So we'll call that 8.0. Seven pounds, seven ounces. So we'll go ahead and call that 7.5. Now we'll go ahead and get an average. So our average came out to 8.2. Yeah, you can see that's way off between the two Lyman gauges. Let's go ahead and test the Wheeler digital gauge now. All right, so here's the Wheeler digital gauge, real fancy. <clears throat> it actually has some pretty cool features. You've got this peak feature in here. What else? You got a live feature. We'll go on peak. Uh, just so we get a peak reading. It's got this little sensory tool here. I'll actually have links to all this stuff too so we can get everybody on the same page with their gauges. So we'll call this the WD Wheeler Digital. All right, let's go ahead and do some Schrager pull readings. So it's already cleared out. You don't have to clear it out. Six pounds, 5.9 ounces. So we'll go ahead and call that 6.5. Now we clear it out, we just hit the delete button. There we go. Five pounds, 4.3 ounces. 5.25. Five pounds, 9.5 ounces, so 5.5. .5. Four pounds, 2.3 ounces. It's way out there. Four pounds, six ounces. All right, let's go ahead and get the average. All right, so the average is 5.15. Look at that, wow. So you can see the two that are calibrated are pretty spot on. This one here is way off and even the manual gauge is way off because our data is rounded from the get-go to a mega extreme. You can see how those little tick marks, we can just kind of guessed, right? At least here with the digital gauges, we were a little more precise. Our rounding was a little more precise, whereas this, it was very, you know, in quarters. It was all like, eh, that looks like a half or three quarters. So you can see how these two can be way off. This one wasn't calibrated, this Lyman Digital. And then this manual gauge is kind of like, eh. Manual gauges are okay, but they're not really precise. So we definitely highly recommend the digital gauges. You can see here between these two calibrated, brand new digital gauges, how they're spot on. They're almost exactly the same averages. Well, there you have it guys, 20 different trigger pull readings, not one of them really ever the same. We actually did some averages here and you can see how, so the manual gauge, this is the Wheeler manual gauge here, this was about seven and a half pounds. Then the Lyman digital gauge, the one that was calibrated was five, five and a quarter. The Lyman digital gauge, the one that was out of calibration was coming in at eight pounds, way off. And then the Wheeler digital gauge, same, it was almost five and a quarter. You can see how the Wheeler gauge and this Lyman gauge were pretty much spot on, it's almost identical. But with that, no two trigger pull readings are ever the same. You've got the human element, you've got the calibration element, you've got the firearm element, there's so much involved. So hopefully this gives a little more transparency and a little more clarity into the world of trigger pulls and how this is all calculated and then why it's so important to do an actual trigger pull reduction percentage because whatever your baseline is and then your after result is those percentages are always going to be the same so that's always the underlying factor what kind of trigger pull reduction did you get here's a great example of a ton of trigger pulls on the same rifle and the same variation between them all so 
we get the question quite a bit. Some guys will be like, hey man, you know, I had a crazy trigger pull reading. I didn't really get the results you got in the video. Well, here it is. Everybody has different results. Everybody's got different trigger pull readings. What is your trigger pull reduction percentage? That's the key. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Let me know your feedback. We really geeked out on some trigger pull stuff and some math, but hey, that's what it's all about. So now we have some good, precise baselines we can operate from. Hope it was helpful. Let me know your feedback. Thank you, Carbo Brother, for your support as always. Happy shooting.